In January 1775, the Prime Minister, Lord Frederick North, is going to send out orders for the military governor of Massachusetts, Thomas Gage, to march on a weapons stronghold in, in Concord. It was rumored there would be weaponry there, uh, and it would, it would be a severe blow to the rebellion against the Crown. These orders do not arrive until April of 18, 1775, and on April 19th, uh, the first shots of the American Revolution are going to are going to uh, be fired. Uh, this is the the episode famously captured by Paul Revere's ride uh, in terms of the one if by land, two if by sea. You know, listen, my my friend, my children, you shall hear the midnight ride of Paul Revere. Uh, the only reason why we remember Paul Revere, by the way, is because his name his last name uh, rhymes with the word here when it comes to this story. There are many other writers that are going about. Uh, but nonetheless, in, on April 19th, 1775, British regulars are going to come across basically American militia. We call them Minutemen. And the reason why we call them Minutemen is because they're supposed to be ready to go to battle within a minute. Uh, basically, a uh, you know this, these guys are supposed to be at a bar. Like let's say they're at a bar or a pub. They're you know they're having they're having some a, a drink, and then suddenly they're, they're called out to go and and fight the British. They're supposed to be ready literally in a minute. Well, on April 19th. We're going to see uh, some Minutemen and uh, and, Brit and British regulars uh, uh, meet um, basically on the green of Lexington, Massachusetts, and the British just basically push them off to the side. It was not a not a no question at all when it came to the uh, when it came to the outcome of, of that battle. We can't really I mean I really wouldn't call it a battle. It's it's an insult to the word battle when you when you think about it. It's more of a skirmish. And so this is the famous shot heard around the world. Uh, and then the British are going to keep on marching. They're going to march uh, toward Concord, uh, where, again, they're going to come across, and the British are going to encounter 60 to 70 Minutemen, and, they're, and the British are going to have 700 uh, soldiers. Uh, but the problem is going to be that the British have to cross over a bridge. Uh, and you know, if you watch like movies like 300 and with the famous Battle of Thermopylae, uh, we you can use uh, the geography in order to to nullify numbers like the Spartans did at the Battle of Thermopylae. Well, the the American Minutemen are going to do the same thing here. They're going to use the bridge uh, as basically a bottleneck for uh, for themselves when they so the British cannot send over 700 guys immediately. They have to send it over piecemeal, and this is going to this is going to basically serve as a major advantage for the Americans. No longer do they have to fight off 700 people at one time. They get, they only are going to fight off a significant, an insignificant part of the of the of the British soldiers. And so they are able to hold back uh, and keep, deny uh, the British access to Concord. So the, the British soldiers have no no real option other than to turn around and go back to Boston. But along the way, the colonists are going to come out and to, a, to the point that about 4,000 colonists are going to come out and they're going to basically take pot shots against the British soldiers. And then once the British move in back into Boston, Boston is now going to be under siege. Uh, and it's going to be under siege until the British eventually move out, uh, the sail out. At the same time as this is going on, uh, well, or roughly around the same time, we're starting to see some operations, particularly in upstate New York around Fort Ticonderoga. On May 10th, 1775, an army under the command of Benedict Arnold and Ethan Allen are going to take this this uh, this this fort, and, and what they're also going to acquire is the much needed cannon, siege cannon, in order to fight to uh, ring the city of of, uh, of Boston. Uh, and threaten the British position there. Uh, so the Americans are basically one step away from from taking away a major advantage that the British have, and that, of course, is their navy. The British have the largest navy in the world, and they can easily move their arm their army anywhere they needed to move. But these these ships are made out of wood, so the, the Americans are going to uh, be one step away from taking out this major advantage by acquire. You know, all they need to do is basically acquire the right kind of cannon shot, and the British Royal Navy is in serious trouble. Uh, they're going to, you know, all they need to do is acquire what's called hot shot, basically th incendiary shells, uh, in order to set these uh, these 
the ships on fire. Once the Americans have that, then the game is pretty much up. But nonetheless, uh, the Americans are going to start ringing the uh, the city of Boston uh, in its siege, on, uh, along with the guns that they are going to acquire from Fort Ticonderoga. And all of this is going to, is going at the same time that this is going on. Uh, literally, the Second Continental Congress is going to be meeting as Fort Ticonderoga is going to fall. So let's see what the Fort Second Fort. Continent of the Congress is going to say.